so hi everybody good morning welcome back again so so till now we have seen about uh, um, different types of counters so we have seen the basic principle of a counter okay and uh, we are depending upon uh, its uh, clock pulse how it is going to ca how it is going to count the events so events okay so that we have seen and also we have seen a three bit uh, up counter as well as we have seen a three bit down counter also okay so after that uh, we have seen uh, um, that means uh, if you want to stop uh, if you want to stop uh, your counter for a particular value so if you are going to take a, a three bit counter so if it is having it it is consisting of total eight events okay so that means it can measure it can calculate it can count uh, from zero to seven okay so that means if you want to stop this counter for five so what you are going to use you are going to use the n modulo counter okay so this is also we have seen in last uh, videos so so far we have covered uh, all these um, all this topic so now in this uh, video we are going to see one special type of counter which is called as uh, a ring uh, which is called as ring counter okay so here uh, the name itself it is nothing but it is going to have uh, it is called as a ring counter why means i uh, because of its function so we will see later what is why it is why this name has come once you know how once you know complete details about this counter you can justify we can justify why this uh, ring counter name has come okay so here before getting into the logic diagram before going into the logic diagram so we have we have seen these types of counters okay so three bit up counter down counter and also n modulo counter so then what makes the difference between a ring counter and other type of counter okay so this uh, ring counter is a one special type of counter okay so it is a special type of counter so what it what it is going to how it what the difference okay so what is the difference between so previous counters and uh, this ring counter means so in previous counters so we have given the states okay so we have given the states so according to what so according to the formula that is 2 power n so that means where n is so where n is what so number of flip flops okay so that means in previous case we have seen for 3 bit uh, counter so for 3 bit counter how many number of flip flops we are going to use we are going to use 3 number of flip flops okay so for this how many states we have so 2 cube that means how many state 8 states okay so this is our traditional counter that we have seen in previous case but in case of a ring counter okay so in case of ring counter so what about the states so the states are equal to the states are equal to number of uh, bits okay so that means so number of bits or number of flip flops that's it we are not going to take as what 2 power n for example if you are going to design um, a 3 bit uh, ring counter okay so a 3 bit ring counter means the number of states uh, number of states will be equal to what so number of states will be equal to only uh, three so that i am going to show you later so but this is the main basic difference between what so our previous counters and traditional counter and a ring counter okay so this is the main difference and also why this name ring has come also we will see after clear understanding what it is going to produce its output okay so that is the main point so, so here first i will draw the logic diagram so that is nothing but the circuit diagram for ring counter okay so in case of ring counter we are going to take the help of d flip flop okay so we are going to take the help of d flip flop so while telling i am we are going to take the help of d flip flop means definitely we have to keep a, or we have to memorize the it's a truth table okay so what is the truth table for d flip flop means so depending upon the clock as well as depending upon the value of d so if d value is equal to 0 it is going to produce q value as 0 if d is equal to 1 what will be the value of q q is equal to 1 okay so according to that uh, truth table of d flip flop okay so this ring counter is going to be 
function okay so to design a ring counter we are going to use d flip flops so that is of uh, that is one of the point so next we have given the truth table for d flip flop that is d is equal to 0 it is going to produce q is equal to 0 and for d is equal to 1 and it is going to produce q is equal to uh, 1 so next what makes the difference between a ring counter and uh, and uh, previous counters means so it, uh, it is nothing but what states here in case of ring counter the number of states will be equal to the number of bits or the number of flip flops okay so since we are designing now what we are designing we are designing three bit ring counter okay so so that how many number of flip flops we have to take we have to take three flip flops that two three d flip flops so that the number of states of this uh, three bit ring counter will be what so will be equal to three so this i am going to show it so once we understand about the working principle okay so we will i will draw the diagram and we will check it out so since we are designing so three bit uh, ring counter we have taken three flip flops okay so let it be so this is a flip flop number uh, uh, one so whose output is q naught and q d naught and this is the second flip flop whose output is uh, q1 and input is d1 and this is our third flip flop so that is q2 as well as d2 okay so each and every flip flop is having what's a clock pulse so you please remember that so we are designing this uh, uh, ring counter for so for positive edge triggering okay positive edge triggering that means what whenever uh, so if this is our clock pulse okay so whenever the pulse is going from whenever the pulse is going from 0 to 1 so the input values are going to be change since this is a d flip flop we can design for what positive edge triggering so if it is a jk flip flop we will design for what negative edge triggering negative edge triggering why means because to nullify the race around condition and to get a toggling state so only for that jk flip flop we will use that a negative triggering so here also you can use negative edge triggering but it is not required because since it is not experiencing any race around condition okay so you can use positive edge triggering or you can also design for negative edge triggering don't worry about that okay so that is according to our wish but here i am designing for what for positive edge triggering okay so here we have given so see uh, so clearly so here we have given so the same uh, the clock pulse which is generated from the same source here the same clock pulse is given for three the same clock pulse is given for second d flip flop and the same clock pulse is giving for the first flip flop that means whenever the clock is received positive edge so all the three flip flops are going to change their inputs at the same time okay so that is a point next how about the connections means so the output of the output of d the output of this flip flop what is going to be happen so we are going to feed as the input for the second flip flop similarly the output of q1 is going to feed as input for d naught okay since uh, so we are forwarding so this is q2 d1 and from q1 to d naught and later whatever the output that was coming from q naught we are going to feed back this to the input of what d2 so this is the connection so okay so this is the connection so here okay so here what we will give we will give the clock pulse the same clock pulse we are going to have here so here see observe as i told before so uh, if flip flops are going to have so flip flops are going to have clear inputs okay see clear so clear input and next what you are going to have i am going to explain one more terminal here now that is called as what preset okay so that means as i have explained before so for if you give clear input is equal to zero so what it is going to say so it is going to reset that flip flop okay so it is going to reset that flip flop so that whatever the value is there every value is going to be set to what zero so therefore you will get q is equal to zero whatever the memory or whatever the input is there okay so it will not look for input and also it will not look for clock so whether you give the input or not whether the clock is receiving or not it don't bother whenever you give 
or whenever we give clear input as 0 for the flip flop definitely it will give q as 0 irrespective of the input as well as clock okay so that this is the case already we have seen next we are going to deal with what a preset what do you so preset uh, so what it makes means it sets the value to z to set it sets the value to one okay so that means when you give the preset value to equal to zero so if you make the preset terminal zero so it is going to set or it is going to give the value q is equal to one irrespective of input as well as irrespective of clock pulse so, so this is the point you have to keep in the mem i mean uh, in a as important note what so for so for preset okay so if a preset is equal to zero what will be the value of q q value will become a one okay so that means next if clear input is equal to zero so the value of q is equal to what zero so this is the point that you have to remember so that means so you see i will explain some mm, somewhat uh, clearly so if you are going to have one a flip flop okay so if you are going to have a flip flop so if you are going to have a flip flop so whatever the input may be it is sr flip flop or jk flip flop or d flip flop so here we give inputs as well as we will give clock pulse and it is going to give some output okay so now we are going to have so clear input as well as preset input so if this is preset and this is clear so if you as so I, I am telling so previously if you give for clear input as zero if you make clear input as zero what will be the value of q value q value will come zero so the, if you are making clear is equal to zero you should not uh, make preset value also to zero so if you make preset value also to zero so at that time value of q1 is what so value of q will be equal to one so since you are making clear is equal to zero so and uh, if you make preset is equal to zero q will become what so at the same time q cannot become one and zero so therefore to avoid this uh, issue what you have to make definitely so if you give clear is equal to zero that means if you want a uh, q as 0 you should make clear is equal to 0 and at the same time you should make a preset value as a 1 so that you will now you will have any you will not have any clashing okay so since we give only clear is equal to 0 so it will not so whatever the inputs are here it is there so it will not look unless until preset is equal to 0 then you will get clash therefore there is no problem now so the value q will become what 0 so similarly if you want q is equal to 1 irrespective of uh, what input and clock what we will make we will make preset is equal to 0 meanwhile okay so meanwhile we will make clear value as 0 sorry as uh, 1 okay so at the same time so here there will be no clashing point again so here what will be the value q will become what a uh, 1 okay so this is the main point that you have to keep in the mind so if you are making if you want q is equal to 0 what you have to do you have to make preset is equal to 0 so at the same time what you have to do so you have to make a clear is equal to a 1 okay so if you want uh, or if you want q is equal to 0 what we will make we will make clear is equal to 0 at the same time what we have to do so we have to make a preset value as a 1 so this is the points that we have to keep in the mind because depending upon this only our ring counter is going to function okay so now we are going into the what uh, uh, ring counter so you please note down these all these points uh, aside of your notebook so now we are going into the what how it is going to function so if you observe carefully here we are not give, we are not providing any input from external source for d inputs so here what is happening so whatever the value of q2 is is coming out of this flip flop it is feeding as input for d1 whatever the value of q1 is happening here so it is going to feeding for d flip flop sorry for d naught whatever the value coming out of q naught it is feedback and it is given as feeding for d2 so therefore here since we are not providing any input so see 
so see here so if i am going to take one clock pulse here so here let us take so for which uh, we have designed for positive edge triggering so for positive edge triggering so since we are not providing any input uh, let us assume that all values are zeros okay so if you are giving zero so zero means so the value d to okay so according to d flip flop if d is equal to zero what so q is equal to zero if d is equal to one so what will be the value q is equal to one so at first positive edge if first positive edge the d flip flop will look for what input since we are not providing input what will be the value so the input is what zero so then what will be the output output is zero the same you are going to send here zero zero so if for zero zero if since it you are getting clock pulse at the same time here also you will get zero zero so all the values you will get zero zero next for next clock pulse again the values will be same because they are feed forwarded back again you will have same values zero zero again for third pulse also zero zero so therefore if you give clock pulse continuously it is going to give the output as zero only it is not going to provide any output so this is not a counter okay so always its value will be what zero so this is not we are not going to call it as a counter so to overcome this for ring counter okay to overcome this effect okay so to overcome this effect in case of ring counter what we are going to do means we are going to take initial condition okay so we are going to take initial condition so that means so initial condition means before uh, before reaching the point of what first positive edge that means uh, whenever this is the condition initial condition at this time period okay at this time period what we are going to do means we have how many outputs we have q0 q1 as well as q2 okay so these are the three inputs so what we are going to do in this initial condition means we are going to make any of these three outputs as one you can make q0 is equal to one or q1 is equal to one or q2 is equal to one okay so that uh, since uh, at least if you any one of its value is equal to one then it is going to function then we are going to we can stop this condition of obtaining continuous zeros so then without providing any input how we are going to get the output as one so here there comes what the preset terminal as well as clear terminal we are going to use these two terminals okay so that means as i told before for q is equal to one if you want q is equal to one what you have to do we have to make preset is equal to what zero and clear is equal to what one and uh, if you want q is equal to zero what we have to make so we have to make clear input is equal to zero and preset value as one so that uh, so during this initial time period during this initial time period we will make any one of this uh, flip flop preset value as what zero if you make uh, any one of the value any one of the flip flop presetting terminal as zero so then what will be the value of q so you will get the value of q1 irrespective of its input as well as clock pulse so that is the main point or uh, that is the main use of what preset terminal and clear terminals in case of in case of what ring counter okay so now what you are going to do so i'm going to show the clear inputs so this is clear input so this is your clear input okay so this is your clear input and we are going to have preset terminal so this is p so this is preset terminal and this is preset terminals okay so now i'm going to rub it and i'm going to uh, have again okay so let us have this is this is a clock so if this is clock so how many uh, inputs are there so we have three outputs that is q2 q1 as well as 
q naught okay so i mean this is not clear so this is clock okay so during initial time period so okay so initial so during initial time period of clock pulse what we are going to take so what we are going to do so we are going to make any value any one of the values of q2 q1 and q0 as what as 1 so that we can have so i'm making q0 is equal to 1 we can make q1 as well as q2 no problem okay so don't worry about that so i'm making q0 is equal to 1 if i want q0 is equal to 1 what i have to make for p i have to make p is equal to 0 if i make preset value is equal to 0 here what so i can get the value of q0 as what 1 so at the same time what should i make clear input i should make clear input as a one so what about remaining two values i should make remaining two values as zero so if i want to make a q1 as zero what should i give i should give clear input as zero and i have to make what so p is equal to one so similarly for here clear input is equal to zero and here i will make what p is equal to a one so that uh, here what will be the output so so now so here you will get the output as zero and here you will get output as one and here we will get the output as uh, one so okay so this is the one where we are going to feedback but i am not writing now okay so just i have written only the present outputs according to the clear and the preset terminals okay okay so so that now what you are going to do so first see observe just later i will draw the graphic i mean graph so first uh, if you understand how you are going to get the values we can draw the diagram I mean a timing diagram later so this is the clock pulse where I am going to where I am I am providing for all the three uh, D flip flops okay so this is as I told before this is our initial condition so during this time period only I am making what Q2 Q1 and Q0 as 0 0 1 so okay so this is our time initial time period during this period only we will give what clear inputs as well as preset inputs once once uh, this positive edge is reached that is once our first positive edge has arrived we will we can remove okay so we can remove why because it's one of the input is one okay so therefore for first okay so this is your first positive edge for first positive edge whenever first positive edge has arrived that the day flip flop is going to see its uh, what its input now we go we go back to the what circuit diagram so whatever what is the input of d2 now so you see here one is directly connected as a feedback to what so d okay so d2 so with this input what it is going to provide it is going to provide an output okay before providing output so here it looks for d1 so before the so for d1 what is the input here so this uh, so this zero is directly connected so you will get what zero so this uh, q naught this this q1 is directly connected for d naught so this is zero so now i am going to rub it because you will get confused now carefully observe okay so this one is connected here this output is connected as input okay so next uh, it's q naught it's brief i mean its previous value of q2 is connected as input so i have written here d1 is equal to 1 and q1 output is connected to d0 so therefore i have written d0 is equal to 0 so now at this position now what so here now the clock has arrived for the first positive edge first positive edge so this is our first positive edge okay so for first positive edge now the d flip flop is going to look for its inputs so what are the inputs for here so here you got d2 d is equal to 1 we know that uh, for a d flip flop if d is equal to 1 what will be the value of q2 q2 will become 1 okay so q2 will become 1 next what will be the value of this output of this d flip flop so d is equal to 0 then what is the value of q1 q1 is equal to 0 next what is the value of d here d is equal to 0 therefore what will be the value of q0 q0 will become 0 okay so now what is the value of q2 here 1 q1 is equal to what 0 what so next q naught is equal to zero so now you have obtained one zero zero when you have obtained for first 
positive edge okay so for the first positive edge it is going to be happen so next so these numbers or these values is going to be same for this complete time period so next it will next the input values are going to change for second what second positive edge okay so now you see what is the previous output here previous output is zero so this zero will come here and it will present here okay zero so what is previous output here it is one so this one will come here and it will present here so what is the previous output here it is zero so no problem so zero okay so now when the negative edge sorry when the second positive edge has arrived again d flip flop will look for the what values input values so now what is the value for d2 d2 is equal to what zero so now what is the output for q2 it becomes zero what is the input for d1 d1 is equal to one so therefore what is the output for q1 it is one okay so what is the input for d0 d0 is equal to zero what is the output here you will get zero okay so these are what so present values so what are the present values now so so it is 0 1 0 0 1 0 for what second positive edge okay so this is for second positive edge so okay so whatever the values are there so here it will go back again so this is the one okay so now this one will appear here this one will appear here this zero will appear here for for what for third positive pulse for for third positive edge okay so for third positive edge what is the value of d2 it look for the value of d2 now so it will get the value as zero what is the value of d0 d0 d1 is equal to zero so that you will get q1 is equal to zero what is the value of d1 d1 is equal to one what you will get here you will get what q0 is equal to one so now what is the new values of q2 q1 and q0 0 0 1 0 0 1 for which for your third positive pulse so here i will write down okay so for third positive pulse you are getting 0 0 1 okay so next we go for the fourth positive edge for fourth positive edge whatever the one is there it is going to present here okay so for it is going to be present this value this zero will come here this zero will come here okay so now what is the value so, so for one it is going to produce one for zero it is going to produce zero for zero it is going to produce zero what is the value one zero zero so for fourth okay for fourth positive edge it is going to give the value as one zero zero so likewise it is going to see so now see if you observe these values carefully so observe this fearfully so i am writing again so that we can have clearly so 0 0 1 and for fourth it is what for fourth we have got 1 0 0 so you you please carefully observe these terms so that is the starting value initial value is 0 0 1 next it is what 1 0 0 next it is 0 1 0 next you have got 0 1 0 1 0 0 that means uh, after completion of one this is the value so this is 0 0 1 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 next again the same values are going to repeat if you want if you can you can see how that is 0 0 1 is our first value first code next code is what 100 zero, zero. again you have got 100 zero, zero. next what at fifth pulse at fifth pulse you will get definitely 010 zero, zero. so this is they are going to keep on repeating so here how many numbers are there so how many codes after how many events or how many states you are going to repeat so this is first event second event third event again first event third event and third i'm sorry second event and third event so how many number of states are there three so here you got three so that is what i have told what is the difference between a ring counter and normal counter means their states okay so here how many states are there so that is so here we have used three bit okay so three bit ring counter so three bit means how many flip flops we have used three flip flops so how many states you have got so three states okay so this is the state okay so therefore after complete after for every three states so it is going to repeat again the same sequence but one more thing why why we have to see that is so first uh, you observe so how many 
outputs are there we have q0 next output is there q1 next output it is q2 so if you see the traveling of one okay so how this one is traveling starting point the one is at what q0 okay so starting point is at q0 next what about q next what where this one has appeared at q2 this one has appeared at what q2 okay so next what about this one has shifted to what q1 this one has shifted to q1 next what about this one it was this one has shifted to again what come back to what so q0 again what so again it is going back to q1 so likewise it is going to rotate like a like a ring so that is why we are going to call this as a ring counter okay so that is why this according to the traveling point of one okay so according to the traveling value of one with respect to q0 q1 and q2 so the name has come for this counter as what a ring counter okay so this is the main function of what a ring counter now shall we draw for the ring counter timing diagram it is very easy once you have this values we can draw the diagram but what so this point mentioning of what initial initial condition also we have to represent in clock pulse that i will show you how to represent that initial condition for a clock pulse okay so we will draw that diagram and we can close it so this is our clock pulse okay so this is the clock pulse so where we are going to feed for what so where we are going to give the input for d flip flop uh, for all the same flip flops okay so here so where we are going to trigger we are going to trigger near the positive edges for every positive edge our uh, inputs for the d flip flop is going to change okay so this is the point next uh, how many outputs are there we have q0 q1 and so and uh, q2 okay so now we are going to draw for the values of q0 so next we are going to see the value of q1 and next we are going to see the value for q2 okay so these are the values okay so q2 so so what i told for initial condition initial condition means what when the before reaching of first positive edge so this is your first positive edge second positive edge third positive edge fourth fifth positive edge so this is the all positive edge before reaching the first positive edge so if you assume that uh, this is the point where we are going to give our uh, preset values and clear values so up to this position all the values will become what will be zeros only why means we are not going to provide any preset values and clear values and as well as d or whatever it may be since we are not going to provide any value so all the values of q0 q1 and q2 will become zero so at any point at any point in between what so in between zero and first positive edge you can give the clear input as one and preset value as zero as well as according to this what our required values of zero zero one so when you give z when you give these preset and clear combinations what are the values you are getting zero zero one so what is the value of q naught it is one so here when you give preset value as zero here you are going to get q naught is equal to one and q will be zero and q2 is also zero up to where these values will be up to first positive edge so up to first positive edge you are going to have q naught is equal to one and q1 is equal to zero and as well as q2 is equal to also zero so next when positive edge has arrived so when positive edge has arrived what is going to be happen so you are going to get q2 is equal to 0 q1 is equal to 0 and q0 is equal to 0 so q0 is becoming 0 when the first positive edge has arrived q0 is becoming 0 next q1 is also becoming 0 q2 is becoming what it is becoming a 1 so now this value will become 1 up to where this value will remain up to our second positive edge up to our second positive edge you are going to have the same values of zero q1 is equal to zero and q2 is equal to what one 
so next when second positive edge has arrived what is the value of q1 q1 is equal to 0 remaining two values are zeros and then the second positive edge has arrived you will get uh, q2 is what q2 as 0 next uh, sorry q1 as 0 q2 as what 0 q1 is equal to 1 and q0 is equal to will be remaining 0 up to where it is going to remain so up to the third pulse up to the third pulse q1 will be 1 up to third pulse q2 will be 0 next when third pulse has arrived q0 will become what 1 okay so what about q1 so q1 will becoming 0 what about q3 so q3 sorry q2 is also being in 0 up to where these values will be up to your fourth edge up to fourth edge q0 will be equal to 1 up to fourth edge q1 will become 0 up to fourth edge q2 will become 0 next what about for fourth edge it becomes what q2 will become 1 q2 will become 1 q0 q1 is equal to 0 and q0 will become 0 up to where this uh, these values will be so up to the fifth edge you are going to have the same value you are going to have the same value you are going to have the same value so after that what it is going to happen so this cycle will repeat so this will go zero okay so this will go zero next uh, at a fifth edge what is going to happen so this q1 is becoming one and this will become zero up to where up to sixth pulse so if this is sixth pulse up to sixth pulse it is going to this i mean zero this value will become one and this value will become zero so likewise this one these are the steps steps will be diagonally so they will move in rightward direction okay so this is our traveling point of 1 1 1 1 1 1 so 1 1 1 so likewise you are going to get the timing diagram okay so this is the only initial condition so for first initial condition once you have reached the first positive edge so we can remove our clear inputs as well as preset inputs okay so this is all about what your ring counter okay so ring counter is uh, also important so this is a special type of uh, counter only so we are going to have three states so these three states are according to your uh, so number of flip-flops or according to the three i mean uh, three number of bits we have consider so in next coming class we are going to see our serial adder okay so with that we can close our fifth unit okay so thank you